Hi there, welcome to the Eat Portfolio Setup video. My name is Professor Yasmeen Basi Jahal. And in this video, I'm gonna help you, well, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your Eat Portfolio. So before I do so, I want you to pull up the instructions from your professor. So take a moment, pause this video, and pull up the instructions that your professor has assigned to you for this Eat Portfolio project and have that Eat Portfolio template. And in, in the window next to you, make sure it's there for you to follow along. And once you do so, we can begin. All right, welcome back. So the first step is logging into Canvas and locating Eat Portfolios under the Account tab. So you can be logged into Canvas anywhere in Canvas as long as you are in Canvas, and you can locate the Account button under the big T. So click on account on the left hand side of your screen and you're gonna locate Eat Portfolios. So again, locate the account button on the left hand side of your screen under the big T for Tacoma Community College. Click on account and then scroll down to Eat Portfolios. All right, now, that you have located Eat Portfolios in Canvas, we can get to setting up your Eat Portfolio, which is very easy. So let's go back to our Eat Portfolio setup. So once you click on Eat Portfolios in Canvas, you'll be directed to a page where a button that says create an Eat Portfolio will show up either on the right hand side of your screen or at the bottom, depending on what computer you're using. So again, click on create an Eat Portfolio and then the option to make an Eat Portfolio will show up for you. So depending on your instructor, your instructor will either have you name the Eat Portfolio after yourself or after the course. So for my students, I always have them name it after themselves and I have them write Eat Portfolio. And there you go. So name your Eat Portfolio. And then the very important step is making your Eat Portfolio public. So to do so, all you need to do is check off, make it public, right under where you titled your Eat Portfolio and named your Eat Portfolio. So once you do so, you're gonna click on make an Eat Portfolio. And here we are. This is your Eat Portfolio. All right. And say if you forgot how to, um, say if you didn't click on make Eat Portfolio public, all you gotta do is click on settings and there you are. You can check off that button very easily. All right, our next step will be creating Eat Portfolio sections. And reminder, for the sake of this video, I'm using my Eat Portfolio template. So the sections that I create in this video are just an example to show you how to create sections. So you are going to wanna follow the Eat Portfolio template that your professor has assigned to you. So pull that up, make sure you have that. And so you can create the right sections for this Eat Portfolio. So for my English 101, I have my students create a bio page for their first section. So you're gonna locate the section, add section button on the left-hand side of your screen. So click on add section. And then this option right here will show up for you. So the first page for my students is bio. The second one is rationale. The third one is project number one. And as you can see here, it's very easy to create sections. Once you get started, it's just very easy. So here are all the sections that I have my students create for my ePortfolio project. And then I'm gonna keep going here. And there we go. So these are all the required sections for my ePortfolio project. And you're gonna hear that I'm gonna say my ePortfolio project, because again, I want you to follow the ePortfolio template that your professor has assigned. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to rename landing pages for your sections. So if you go to the bio page, so let's click on the bio page. You will see at the top, it will say new page. 
So for each of, so here's the thing. These are the section names on the left-hand side, but it all, but the eat portfolio gives you an option to rename what's called the landing page. So edit. So what we're going to do on the right-hand side, we're going to click on edit this page. Again, this might be at the bottom, depending on your computer. So you can click on edit this page and I'm going to say, Hey, meet professor Bossage Hall as my title for my bio. And I'll click save page. And that you can do this for every section of the ePortfolio. It's very easy. Now I'm in project number one section. I'm going to click on edit this page. And then the first page is this page is called Literacy Narrative. I'll save the page. I'll go to project number two. Same thing. I'm going to click on edit this page. This one's called Writing Process and Craft. I'll save the page. Go to project number three. This one is called research video presentation, save page. And you get the point, you can just rename all the landing pages so you can add a little bit of difference if you would like. So here, so now the next step I'm gonna show you is how to create section pages. So sub, subsection pages. So we'll go to project number one. So for all the projects in my course, I have my students create the following subsections. So on the right-hand side, I'm gonna click on add page, and then the subsection is going to be cover letter. I'll save my page, add, it, add another page, and the page will be pre-write. I'll click on save, add page, and this one's gonna be takeaway. And again, I have my students do this for all of the major projects in my course. So I'll go to project number two, I'll do the same thing. I'll add another page, add page, cover letter, pre-write, takeaway. Very easy, very simple. And for practice, I will let my students create the sub pages for project number three. Alrighty, now I'm going to show you how to copy and paste your content into your ePortfolio. So for the sake of this, I'm going to go to project number one, and I'm going to use my student Michael's project number one as an example of how to copy and paste. So this is Michael, Michael's ePortfolio. You see that he has his bio page with this picture, and I'll show you how to do this as well. So let's go to Michael's project number one. And I'm gonna just copy this. And here's the cool thing about eat portfolios. You can copy and paste from a Word document wherever you have submitted this project. Maybe it's gonna be, you can even go to your Canvas submission. Um, you can copy that. Maybe you're going, you wanna highlight a discussion that post that you wrote. All you gotta do is copy the wherever that discussion post is located. And then you go back to your eat portfolio and you're gonna click on edit this page. And then this box right here will show up. Sometimes it won't show up. And what I mean by that is, I'll show you. So let's say that this box didn't show up for me and it looked like this instead. All I have to do is click on edit this page and then under the add content, I will click on rich text content, and then the box will show up. And this is where I can copy and paste. And here's a cool thing. You can allow your professor to add comments. And so you want to make sure that you click off these buttons here as well. So save page. And here you go. The literacy narrative is copied and paste. I'll do the same thing for cover letter to show you one more time how to copy and paste. Again, you can copy and paste from a Word document. Um, I do not suggest copying and pasting from a um, PDF, it's very hard to do so. So I just suggest that you use Word document. Uh, maybe you're on Google Drive, so you can use a Google, you can copy from a Google, Google document. It's very easy. So edit this page again. The box will either show up or on its own. Save page. There you go. Very, very easy to copy and paste. There's also another way to copy um, uploading um, content into your eat portfolio, which is using what's called. So I'm going to go into the pre-write section. I'll click on edit this page and you can click on course submission. And then this will pop up the file or where the, uh, will pop up the file 
for you. However, this will depend on your instructor and I suggest not doing so because the copy and paste um, feature is so much easier because the whole point is that your professor can see your, your copied and pasted version of your project or discussion post or assignment that they are looking for. So I will show you that just for, this, for the sake of it. So you can click on course submission. And since I'm not a student, I don't have any course submission, but I did do an anti-racist training. So I'll just click on one of the submissions. I'll select that submission. I'll save the page. And now my submission for this assignment is now showing up. So there's this option as well. But again, your instructor is going to prefer that you copy and paste. Keep it easy. Keep it simple, as I always say. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to insert pictures and videos. You can either upload pictures or copy or paste from Google. So let me show you how to upload pictures. So let's start with the bio page. So we'll go here. So we'll click on edit this page on the right hand side. And I'm going to make sure that this box is showing up because this is where I'm going to drag my pictures. So I'll click on image slash file upload under the add content section. And then I will choose a file from my desktop. And then I'll make sure that file is uploaded and I'm going to make sure it's a JPEG. So it's as long as the file says G ends with GP, it was not, not GP, so JPG, you should be good. This is what's called a JPEG and you'll click on select and upload file. So it'll take a second. And then now my picture is ready to be put into the text box above. So what I'll do is I'll drag the picture over. Very simple. And I don't now, I now don't need the upload, so I'll just delete it. And because the picture looks so huge, I wanna change that. So what I'll do is I'll click on the picture and then this blue little outline will encompass my picture. So this is how I can change the size. And then even with this, you can um, al align your picture very differently. Like, so say if you want to align it to the center, go ahead and click this option up here. These little lines right here, you can either do the right, the left. I'm someone that likes the center and I'm gonna make the picture a little bigger. And underneath my picture, I'm gonna either copy and paste my bio or type it here. I suggest working outside of ePortfolio because it does not have a auto save feature. Maybe one day it will. All right, so save page and there you go. Here is my bio page. And another way to um, add pictures is just to copy them straight from Google. So I'm gonna to go to the home page of my ePortfolio. I'm gonna click on edit this page. I'm gonna to go to Google. I'm gonna take a picture of a mountain. So let's pick this picture of a mountain. I'll click on it and then I'll do right click, copy image, go back to my ePortfolio homepage and then I'll just paste it right there. And now I have a picture of a mountain on my homepage. Very, very easy to copy and paste from Google or upload. So it's totally up to you which one you want to do. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to do videos. So there's two ways to do videos. So first and foremost, I suggest that, let's see, I'm gonna pick on the rational page. So I suggest that you create a file, a folder, sorry, a folder in your TCC OneDrive that you can share with your professor. So say if you don't want to put your um, videos on YouTube or you're too shy, I totally understand that. Another way to keep things um, private is to do this through OneDrive. So what you're gonna do is create a folder in OneDrive. I'm just I just named it ePortfolio example file, um, example folder, I meant to say folder. And then you're gonna click on share and just make sure you share this folder with your instructor so that they can view anything that's in this folder um, so say if you upload a video, it'll be easy for your instructor to see that in your ePortfolio. So here's a video that I've uploaded in my ePortfolio example folder in my OneDrive. And I've clicked on that video and now I'm gonna insert it into my ePortfolio. And to do so, I'm gonna click on share at the right hand side. And then I'm gonna get what's called an embedded code. 
And here is that embedded code. I'll copy that embedded code. I'll go back to my ePortfolio. I'll click on edit this page. And of course I need a box, right? So I'll click on rich text content and I can embed it, embed the video by clicking on insert and then click on the embedded option and paste it right there. Very easy to do. And then I'll click on save page. That's one way to embed a, embed a video or you can embed it by clicking on edit this page and click on HTML embedded content. And for the sake of this, I'm gonna show you a YouTube video. So here's a YouTube video that I've created that is public. So I'll click on share, click on embedded, con embedded get that code, copy that code, go back to my ePortfolio, I'll paste it here. And now I have a YouTube video inserted into my ePortfolio. Very, very easy and simple. All right. Now next, I'm gonna help you link your ePortfolio into your Canvas profile. Now this is one of the easiest steps. So what you're gonna do is click on bio and you're gonna copy the URL at the top and then you're gonna click on user profile on the left-hand side where your sections are. And this will bring you to your Canvas user profile. And what you're gonna do is click edit profile and then you're gonna click on add another link. So eat portfolio, English 101, let's just have that example there. And then I'll paste that bio URL in here and click on save profile. By doing this, my instructor can now locate my ePortfolio from what's called the people's page in Canvas. So I'll show you what that means. So on the left-hand side, you'll see people page. And then I'm not gonna choose any of my students, so I'm gonna choose myself. So I'll click on Yasmin Chahal. And by doing so, all my eat portfolios and my Canvas profile will show up for my students. And then your instructor can go to this people's page and see all your eat portfolios. They can see your Canvas profile. And then your classmates can see your eat portfolio. And the whole point is that once you have your eat portfolio linked in your Canvas profile, your future professors can see this profile, see your eat portfolio. You can add to the eat portfolio. So, say if you started the eat portfolio in English 101, you can. Um, move on into sociology, um, anthropology, whatever class that you are in and you want to display your work, you can start adding to your e-portfolio and your, all your instructors can follow your academic journey and see um, your work. So it's, so it's totally up to you what you do with that. However, I just wanted to show you this cool feature and it's really important because your professor is going to want you to have this feature um, feature in your done with your ePortfolio so that they can easily access it and give you um, feedback and all that good stuff. All right. So that is pretty much it for the ePortfolio um, setup video. I hope that you enjoy creating your ePortfolios. I know that your professor is looking forward to seeing them. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at jjahal at tacomaccc.edu. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you for watching, good luck, and enjoy creating.